are recording. So, welcome everyone to the first Baker Broadcast podcast. I'm your host, Zach Baker, and this is my cousin, Curtis Tucker. Welcome, Curtis. Hey, Zach. How are you? I'm good, man. How are you? I'm good. Enjoying this weather. I'm sitting here in my office with the door wide open, uh, enjoying fresh air and the sunshine. Nice. Yeah, I'm sitting outside. It's a beautiful day. Take it is. A minute. So what's going on? So so I, I guess this is the first episode. I didn't realize this was the first episode of the podcast. Of uh, Well, in a podcast format. Oh, okay, gotcha. Take, well, I'll have to go through that whole process too, but... <clears throat> Just instead of like, uh, you know, the daily stuff that we've been doing and playing music, uh, doing interviews with people that have, uh, you know, knowledge, ideally, right? Or just funny, I guess. <clears throat> but obviously, in your case, it was a, it was an easy first pick because, like we were talking about the other day, um, and I've talked about a couple times recently on the broadcast, uh, something I'm really interested in right now is how technology like iPhones and, uh, you know, specifically like recording software uh, has uh-huh. gotten really good. But uh, so, uh, yeah, tell us a little bit about uh, your history working. I mean, originally a cartoonist. Yeah, well, originally a graphic designer turned uh, advertising director and did that uh, for most of my adult, early adult life. I uh, was uh, advertising director for 10 years, and then I decided it was time for me to go out on my own and uh, woke up one morning and said, hey, I'm going to be a cartoonist and figured out how to be a cartoonist and make money. And that led to me being online. So that's kind of where it all started. 1999 is when it all started. In terms of the Internet, right? In terms of, yeah. So what I'd done was uh, I was sending off cartoons to magazines and it was a long slog of, of waiting, uh, mailing off cartoons and getting them back. And so I got this weird idea. Somebody told me that businesses were building these websites. And I thought, well, wow, what if I had a website and I uploaded my cartoons and I just emailed these editors? They could look at my cartoons online. So I didn't even really know what a website was. I didn't yeah. really know what, you know, so um, I traded a guy a cartoon logo for a website. Well, he never was able to create the website for me. So he handed me the software one day and he said, look, I don't have time, but here, learn this software and you can build your own website. So 1999, I bought cartoons.com. I built my own website and the rest is history. Nice. Yeah. And a lot's happened since then, right? A lot. Yeah. So basically 20 year career online where I've gotten to sit at home in my shorts and sneakers and uh, take care of my two girls and f- the freedom to do whatever I want, to go on vacation where I want. I can work from uh, wherever in the world I want to go. Uh, just total freedom. But, you know, uh, I was kind of the gig economy before there was a gig economy, which is what we're in now, right now, which is you, you, you and your your brood. You guys are the Literally. gig economy. Yeah. Yeah, it's true. Yeah, it's a you, you kind of uh, invented working remotely, I guess you could say, right? Probably. Yeah, you know. Yeah, you know, there was people doing it, um, you know, but it was all it was all these people were how to make money online and they were teaching people how to make money online and they were teaching people how to teach people how to make money online. I was actually just a guy making money online. I wasn't trying to teach anybody anything. I just making money online, you know, for myself. Oh, I remember you explaining it, kind of teaching me a little bit about it. Like, I mean, I can't remember when it was. It must have been, you know, 10 years at least. But yeah. Like, pretty interesting deal. Stringing those websites. I think it was affiliate marketing, right? Was that? Yeah, yeah, basically affiliate marketing and Google AdSense. Uh, I, you know, in one period, I built 100 of my own websites, just crammed them full of advertising and just made half my income off those websites. Nice. Yeah. So, what are you up to these days? Well, in 2012, so I did that for 10 years. It was kind of a, my business was half and half. Half the day I was doing cartoon logos for people all over the world. The other half the day I was continuing to update and build those 100 websites where I was getting advertising Google AdSense. And then in 2012, the Google algorithm, they came up with what they called the Panda Update. And all of the websites that I had built were were built on what they call thin content, meaning they just weren't very authoritative websites. So my whole empire collapsed in March of 2012, and literally overnight, I lost everything I had, all my rankings, all my, just everything. 
And so I had to kind of reinvent myself in 2013. And that's when I started my company that I do now, which is digital media, which was Enid Buzz. But right about that time, social media was taking off. So before that, I hadn't been using apps. I hadn't been using social media. It was all just Google. So after 2012, it all went to apps, social media. And uh, so now I now I use apps and social media and com in combination with podcasts and website and uh, video and live and um, everything now. It's 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 wild. <laughs> it's it's crazy. And, and like like literally every two to three months, they come out with something new that just uh -huh. makes it easier. It makes it easier. I mean, going live was huge, though. I mean, it, it, it was a game changer for, in terms of playing live, you know, because you'd see people pull their phones out all the time, but they were just recording it. Yeah. Um, and when that happened, it's like, no, you're like kind of on TV now. So, <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So, Don't so, it, it, well, yeah. And so what I've become for my hometown, I've, I live in a town, Enid, Oklahoma, with 50,000 people. And because of Facebook and Facebook lives, I have become the news or the TV station for Enid, Oklahoma. So I go out right. and cover stories and I go live like I did twice today. I went out and covered two stories live today. And so I literally am the TV station for my hometown. Pretty cool. Yeah. Pretty but, cool. But yeah, but my brand definitely went through the ceiling after I started doing the Facebook lives. I mean, the more you can get your face out in front of people and be recognized, man mm -hmm. your brand will just it'll just take off really really quick a lot faster than anything else yeah and it's so easy too once you get used to it it's it's there was a little bit of a hump at first uh yeah just in terms of being a musician like it's you're playing at the house so it's kind of like practicing but you're also playing for people so it's kind of like performing but they're not there so it's, yeah it's a kind of weird deal at first but uh i'm really digging it now so now you know yeah kind of my, my wheels are spinning in terms of like where where it goes next because I mean kind of like what we were talking about the other day is uh, you know like comedians and stuff I feel like are doing this more so because uh, for instance you know they don't have to I guess like make I guess they make recordings right yeah um, but but yeah there's a little more involved with the musician you've got you know sound and microphone and guitar and, and you know right well, I mean, yeah, the guitar for sure, but man, I got to tell you, like, I've got an amp sim, uh, amp simulator pedal board that uh, does all the effects, but also has, it simulates amps, right? Oh, cool, so I, yeah. I put my guitar straight into there, and it sounds like I've got a whole pedal board rig and everything, which I was kind of apprehensive about at first, but I've been digging it. Um, oh, yeah. So, like, I can plug that into my computer or my phone, and it sounds like I've got a huge guitar. And then yeah. the microphones and the cameras are pretty good now. Yeah. The iPhone 11 is like really good quality stuff. <laughs> Dude, you know, people make fun of me for spending $1,200 or more on the iPhone. And they're like, I can't believe you spent $1,200 on a phone. And I'm like, dude, I don't even use it as a phone. That is a 4K camera, high quality, mm -hmm. well, 4K video camera, high quality camera, my computer, access to the entire world, all in one little device that you stick in your pocket. How could you not pay twelve hundred dollars for it? I mean, dude, come on. Or or go buy a whole studio, right? Yeah. Like, it, it, like not it's, even almost, it's almost the equivalent. In some, oh, it in is. some capacities, it's like more efficient. You yeah. Know? Um, and then now they've got uh like audio editing apps that are they've it's gotta be some sort of AI deal because like it can edit it for you. Like it'll, yeah. it'll fix the whole part for you. So like, then it's like, you know, I mean, just how you, you basically have AI as your producer and your phone is your studio and uh, yeah. book live is your, you know, your TV station. It's like, you got yeah. the whole deal right there. And then like the other day I recorded the song actually, and then I mixed it and then I got it mastered on a website, right? Oh wow! So I, I sent it in and actually got it mastered through a free trial, so for free online. Uh -huh. And then uh, got it loaded up on Bandcamp and for sale all within like six hours. Wow. Yeah. That's was, pretty cool, man. I thought about that before, and I'd like to get better at it, like streamline the process, but just for the heck of it, I got I kind of got going and then didn't stop till I was done just for the principle of it. 
but uh that's something you can do now you know what i mean yeah it's yeah it's, so hey had you been doing any lives or anything from home before the COVID-19 thing started or, or was that what, what kind of propelled you into doing it? Definitely. Uh, that's what propelled me mostly into doing it. I'd done them live, like pl when I was playing live. Yeah. Yeah. Mostly though, from other people pulling out their phone and going live. Uh, -huh. uh that's how I realized how much I liked it. Actually. I think I had done it once with my own phone at a live show before, but I don't think I'd done it uh in this kind of capacity yet like it like doing a performance where no one's there <laughs> um so yeah that was that was new to this corona deal and uh yeah you know a little silver silver lining right uh, yeah yeah i think a lot of people are and that's why i i actually started that buzz guy podcast during this covid 19 because i know you know 33.3 .3 million people or or in going higher out of out of a job so I want to be able to teach people how to get online. So right now, anybody out there could start a podcast right now for free. You pull out your phone, you download the Anchor app, and you can start recording right into your phone. And you've got a podcast that goes, it'll upload it to iTunes and everything for you. You right. pull out your phone, you video yourself, you open up a free YouTube account. You've got mm -hmm. a completely free video channel or... Yeah. You go to blogger.com or Wix or Weebly, you start a blog, and you've got a completely free blog you can start right now. So any one of those three, you can start right now completely for free and get started. And then eventually, it'll pivot, and you'll start making money, and you'll figure out where you want to go. But it's well, just crazy. And if the kind of industry norm shifts, which it, it already has been just because of streaming and everything, but, uh, I mean, I really feel like I hear more of, like, a computer sound, like, almost as part of of the the sound and some of the music you know in the last yeah. few years for sure yeah and i kind of heard that in the song i did the other day and kind of liked it right because i was like before i'd never really liked having that kind of feel on it because you know i was playing in a room or whatever but in this capacity like really especially in the way i was editing and stuff like i was kind of the computer was definitely a big part of it so it's almost like fitting for yeah. for that to kind of still be palpable i think and then you know, so if we start doing just song by song, you know, and you could do it yourself, uh, that could look real different, which yeah. is still what people are already doing, you know. Yeah. But yeah, well, and, and I just listened to a guy on another podcast before we came on when I went on a quick walk and he's self-publishing his book. So it's no different than people writing their own books and self-publishing them. That's exactly what you're doing with your music, man. You're just you record it. You you edit it, you upload it, and you you publish it, and then you got to market it. Now that's that's the that's the hard part of of publishing is marketing it yourself. Right. There are so many different avenues. Which so like, all right. So in your opinion, let me ask your advice as a new, you know, fairly new content producer. Uh, what are some of the best like avenues to do that, or you know, tricks of the trade? We were talking about TikTok the other day. Yeah, yeah. And I, I would highly recommend for anybody that's in the entertainment, art, creative field, go TikTok, man, because it's, it's all based on algorithms. So Google is hard to rank in because of the algorithm. Right. Instagram, nobody sees your posts anymore because of the algorithm. Facebook, nobody sees your posts again anymore because of the algorithm. TikTok is, is starving for content, so there's no algorithm. If you throw something out there, Everybody that likes you pretty much gets to see it. Now, once it gets really, really popular, they're going to have to put an algorithm on it. But right now, it's a wild west, and so people can build up a really big following. So my number one suggestion is get on TikTok, but you got you and I talked about it. You got to be consistent. Mm -hmm. And so, so you may put out 20 videos of your songs, and 19 of them may may, may just do nothing. But all it takes is one man. You get one to go semi-viral, and all of a sudden you got 50,000 fans. And then those Wait people the other ones to follow in. Exactly. Exactly. But and the only way you're going to get that one drive to your other pages is the other exactly. thing. I was, I've had a yeah. couple conversations where people I didn't exactly see because I didn't understand that there was like music and stuff on there, too, yet. But uh, some people were thinking that they wouldn't it wouldn't translate. But I mean, the reality is if somebody sees it there that likes your music and you've got your URL or you've got your link. Yeah. What does it matter? Really? That's like a bill. That's like a free billboard for the whole world, really. You know? Yeah. Well, what you got to understand is TikTok is whatever you want it to be. Don't let TikTok tell you what it thinks it is because it's not. I mean, it used to be musically. 
for for you know 11 12 year old kids right. and then they now they, then they renamed it and and combined it and made it tiktok well now if you watch the stats it's aging up every month it ages up a little bit you don't get on there and see 11 year old kids anymore now you see do redneck dudes that get on there and say funny, stupid stuff. So everything you do doesn't have to be funny on TikTok. It doesn't have to be a dance on TikTok. It can just be you putting your music out there. I'm going to get on there and all I'm going to do is talk about being an entrepreneur and working for yourself. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And we'll see, we'll see where it goes. I mean, who knows? You never know. Interesting. Yeah. So, so that'd be my number one deal is, is TikTok right now. TikTok. Okay. Yeah. But also if you're doing a video, you might as well take that video and put it on YouTube. So have you some YouTube videos. And then, so, so when I do my podcast, I re record it into a computer. That's my audio podcast. I have a camera on the side that films me. That's my vodcast, my blog, which is the video. But right. before I do the podcast, I write out a, a post on my blog. So for one piece of content, I've got a blog post, a podcast, and right. a video, all three, why just wasn't doing one thing. And so now what I need to do is break up those videos that I do for YouTube into 15 second and put them on TikTok and see what happens. Do you do iMovie for that or what do you use? Yeah, I do. I use iMovie. And it's it, just like you said, you edit on the fly. So I can go to an event in Enid, Oklahoma. Like let's say the mayor's giving a speech and let's say it's a, a 20 minute speech. I can record the first five minutes. I can hop on my iPhone into iMovie. I can put an intro onto it that I might already have made up. I can have the, I can chop out what parts I don't want. I can have them blend, fade into each other. I can put my logo on the end. I can upload that to the internet before the guy's even done with his speech. People don't know whether it was live or what, you know, now I couldn't just go live, which I do, but sometimes you can just upload a video, but uploading the video, you get that more professional quality. You get the beginning and the end and then the, you, sure. you know, you kind of, yeah. So, so yeah, so it's, uh, I use iMovie and it, it just so fast on a phone, you know, it 10 well, times faster on a phone. And going live, you have the, the video too, is the other thing. Like, yeah, I'm using that footage a lot too. Like at yeah. first I would kind of forget if I had just gone live that like actually that it was just sitting out there. Uh, yeah. And what's, what some people may not know is if you go live on your iPhone, I don't know what it does on an Android, but if you go live on Facebook at the end of the live, there'll be a button up at the top in the upper right that says save to phone. Oh yeah. You want to you save that because that's your high quality version. Because if you try to save the live from Facebook, it's pixely and, and they okay. don't want you to use up there. So when you upload it to Facebook, they, they compress it. And that what's, that's what makes it pixely. And that was, and the sound is even bad. I haven't tried in the last couple of months, but I, I had tried several months ago and I didn't even find a way to download it from Facebook once it was up there. I may have been trying on one that somebody else had posted, but I think I tried on one of mine too. And I just started doing a screenshot though, which ended up being the same deal. Uh, well, there's websites and you just type in download a Facebook video and these websites will pop up and they will just tell you to type it, paste the URL of the video you want to download and it will download the the videos from Facebook and YouTube for you. You got to be careful because they put a whole bunch of spam ads everywhere and they make they make you think there's different places to click, but you just have to concentrate on on the one area to download the video to your desktop and it'll download any Facebook video you want right to your desktop. Nice. Yeah. Okay. So Yeah. And that's how I do that YouTube as well. That'd be good to know because I've had several Say what? Come say hi to Zach real quick. Ch Chaney's here. Hi, Chaney. How's it going? Remember me? <laughs> He's. Oh, I'm sorry. My fa sound's in here. That's Zach. Do you remember Zach? Oh, yeah. Well, yeah, we were at your wedding not too long ago, so. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Good okay. To you, good to see you. He said good to see you. Good to see you. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> Dad, dad stuff. Sorry. Yeah, man. No problem. No problem. The joys of uh, working remotely, right? Yeah. And I and I was going to say, I'm blaming the dog barking earlier on you and not me. So I don't want anybody to think the dog was at my house. Okay. Yeah. I'll take it. I'll take it for sure. I've got a couple roaming around here. One of yeah. mine. But there's a couple others on the other side of the fence here. Uh, okay, so. So, so, so anyway, so what they're calling now is the gig economy, which is everybody – 
isn't working full time jobs. They're all working these side gigs, which is delivering pizza for, you know, for these uh, pizza delivery companies. There are Uber. people like you. Yeah. And then they're Uber. And then there's people playing music like you. Uh, there's people dancing that are teaching dance live or, or doing video people doing workouts. They're working people out. And so it's become this whole gig economy. And some of it runs off of apps. And so, you know, one of these days and I don't it may be out there or it may be coming. Somebody's going to come up with an app that when you get onto the app, it tells you which people are doing music live, what their channels are and where to find them. And that's going to be that's going to be like a directory of people doing just their own live gigs. And like hell, I have to be the one. Live. Exactly. It, it, and it'll just be an app that'll tell you this guy's doing lives on YouTube or this guy's doing live on Instagram. This guy's doing live on Facebook. So and it'll give you. Uh, uh, you can go ahead if you want. No, no. So it, it'll be like a just a kind of a directory, I think, and which is going to help you. So right now you go to a podcasting app and it, it's a directory of podcasts. I think eventually there's going to be directory of people doing just their own music online live. So first I was wondering uh, if that directory would include like Instagram live and YouTube yeah. as well, or if it would just be Facebook. And then that led me to uh, wanting to ask you if you ever do a, I think it's like a simul stream or I can't remember what you call it, where you yeah. stream Facebook and YouTube at the same time. Yeah. Yeah. YouTube. We've done that before. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Sometimes not very often, just because my audience is is really heavy on Facebook and mm -hmm. not real heavy on YouTube and Twitter. And you can do it, Twitter, Instagram, Facebook, YouTube, all of them. Okay. Um, and there's there's different apps that will help you do that. But my audience just isn't as engaged on everything. So we used to do it a lot. And now I, it's just easier just to whip out my phone and hop on Facebook. But it Overkill. it is. Yeah. But it is easy to do it. It's not that hard. OK. Yeah, I was thinking about maybe going YouTube and Facebook just because I feel like Facebook does have it or I'm, I may not be right about this, but it seems like it's still probably a pretty good setup for finding new people, at least uh, oh, yeah. more so than like Facebook, unless you're doing, you know, Facebook ads, which is a whole a whole other thing, you know. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. <clears throat> the uh, the actual marketing side of things is. You know. Yeah. Well, you know, now kids are actually they just watch YouTube. I mean, there's shows on YouTube now. So kids don't even watch TV anymore. My kids sit in the room and watch a screen that big and they'll right. either watch Netflix or they'll watch YouTube. So there's not only are there YouTubers with their own channels, but there are actually stations on YouTube. So, yeah, I mean, get yourself on YouTube, get yourself on Facebook, TikTok. Um, well and then the whole deal, if you start adding things, stringing them together, the whole deal really becomes uh, how to streamline it and get that rhythm. Because like like you were saying, if it's not worth it for your audience, uh, you know, having those extras on there doesn't really help. If it's taking up a significant amount of time every day, yeah, you end up cutting down on it. Yeah. yeah. Although I would say give it a chance, though, you know, give it several months and keep going and, and you know, and. And I try to remind people, forget about your numbers. Don't worry about how many people like you or watch your videos right. or, or this or that. It's not that big a deal. If you can get a thousand people to be loyal to you, to your, your, they love your music, you can make a living off of a thousand people. If you've got stuff to sell them, if you've got t-shirts, if they will donate, if they will buy your music, you can make a living off of a thousand people. Well, if, uh, if a thousand people bought that song the other day, I'd have made a thousand bucks in six hours. Well, there you go. See, you could, look I, at, you could look at it that way, right? And so that's like, yeah, kind of the other part of it is like, instead of like a studio and all, I mean, we're not even talking about producing recordings. We're calling it content, really. Yeah, you know? yeah, and there's no overhead, so you you've got very little overhead, which is why you don't have to make as much money. So that's what I'm telling people: quit these jobs. Let's say you're <laughs> you're working you're working at a job and you're making fifty thousand dollars a year and you're miserable and you got to go in eight hours a day and you don't get to take vacation when you want and you never get to see your kids. What what if you could make $35,000 sitting at home in your shorts, you're going to make less money, but you've got less overhead. You know, maybe you sell some stuff or you move to a smaller house or you buy a cheaper car, but man, it's all about being happy. It's all about having the freedom and being happy. Well, yeah. And like kind of the perspective and just kind of like, uh, like mental landscape that that can provide also, I think, you know, sometimes if you're, 
pushing yourself too hard for that little bit extra, you end up losing, you know, because, yeah. uh, uh, you know, life's fun. Yeah. <laughs> well, it's cool. It's cool working for yourself or working at home because you're home all day and you could spend two or three hours on, on promoting yourself or marketing. Then you've got the rest of the day to come up with new things, so, you know, write mm -hmm. a new song or, or do a new video or even start another side gig. I mean, don't ever, uh, you know, well, I, I never I mean, stop. I'm always... Uh, like, like, I mean, it's even kind of what you did. Like, it, uh, you know, I'm still getting better and better at it. Uh, but you become a social media person. Yeah, uh, yeah. Uh, from doing this regularly, um, just kind of out of necessity, really. Um, but it's it's a whole new. It's not new anymore, really. No. But it's, it is a necessity. Like, it's a real deal. I was probably one of the last people to accept that all right, this whole like, you know, social media realm wasn't a fad, right? Yeah. Uh, I was probably one of the last to accept that, but for sure now it's like, oh no, we like, and with the, with the quarantine, it's like, no, now we live in that realm. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. You know? And some, some people are never going to leave it. Some people are enjoying working at home and they're not going back. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. Yeah. yeah the dude, uh, the guy, I can't remember it's a show or whatever, the skeptic guy. I can't remember what his name is. Um, do you know who I'm talking about? He's like a professional skeptic. Like, I, he goes on and does interviews all over the place, uh, just just basically doubting things. Uh-huh. Um, but he was legitimately saying that um, he didn't think that people were going to be hugging and shaking hands the same way ever again, with kind of a hopeful, like, smirk on his face, right? Yeah. Um, he's probably not as – I don't get the impression, at least he's super affectionate, but I might be wrong. But Yeah, no, and I hate to admit it, but – and I thought, you know, during this whole thing, I'm not shaking anybody's hand, but it's hard to, to run into somebody you haven't seen and not shake their hand. I've done it twice, but <laughs> I had san hand sanitizer and I went straight for the hand sanitizer afterwards, but it's tough not to shake somebody's hand. Dude, I do it without, I'll hug people without even thinking, but like yeah. handshakes, like people, like it, most people that know me will know, like I'll, I love handshakes and hugs and stuff. So I've, I've messed that up a few times. Yeah. Hopefully, hopefully I didn't get in trouble by however we get in trouble. Yeah. But not that I, I, I think we're going to, yeah, I think we're going to be okay. So yeah. yeah, I mean, it's, it's a whole different world out there, man. I, I tell people, I wish I was high school age. Now, if you're in high school and you're watching this or listening to this and you don't make a million dollars by the time you're 30, you are lazy. It's, I'm, it's, it's there. It's doable. I mean, right now it's, it's, it can be almost an issue of like which route to take. I mean, I've, I've seen it is. I, it's, you know, depending on who you talk to, it can be like some people will, you know, kind of look down on it, but I've watched a ton of like Ty Lopez and like Gary Vaynerchuk and, oh, yeah. you know, oh, yeah. and Gary, all, you know, like I've got an eBay account, like I've gone and like sold all those little things and done that, you know. Oh, I love it, flipping. Flipping is great. It's, it is cool. It's kind of addictive. It's like, look, you know what I, I do? What? I, I go on a walk every day and I happen to walk around a golf course. So I pick up golf balls. When I get to about 200 golf balls, I sell them for a hundred bucks. And so I, I'm flipping golf balls. And so, but then other stuff, I mean, I'll, I'll buy stuff and I'll, I, yeah, it's, it's a good extra little, another side gig. Yeah. It's a side gig. It, it changes your kind of perspective too on some things. Once you do sell a few things, you know, like uh, we sold like a couple of Ashley's clothes and then she, her eyes got real big cause she's got like, I mean, she's got like four closets. She's got oh, like, wow. like two rooms, you know, of stuff. And she was just like, oh, wow. So I can, it's like, yeah, all this stuff. Has she, like really has she got all this stuff. Oh, yeah, has uh, she got Poshmark? Poshmark? Dude, yeah, it's like the, it's like, it's like the TikTok, right? Of, uh, yeah, it's crazy. Even. Like she got on and she had like 30,000 people like an hour and a half later. It was insane. I was like, is this, are these bots? But they're all like real. It's just people are like, I don't know. Oh, yeah. They must be. It's a frenzy over on Poshmark, man. Oh, it's it's crazy. My daughter sells her clothes. You know, we go buy her $75 shirt, and she'll sell it for $25, and she keeps the money. I mean, you know, she lets it, you know, she lets it go a year or so. But Wait. I'm like, yeah, 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 yeah. So it's pretty cool. I mean, it's uh, it, I I promise you, people, if if you get started on something online, you you're gonna make money. You you will you'll just make money if you stay consistent. And if you kind of let it take you where it takes you, there's yeah. so many different like apps. Like I did a uh, an Amazon FBA fulfillment business for a couple years, uh, where I don't know if you're familiar with that whole deal. Yeah, you, yeah. 
so like and then you know tons to learn from there uh you know going into doing your, your own websites and yeah. drop shipping and yeah that whole deal like you know like if you watch the you that section of youtube you'll know the hustles but oh, yeah uh, they're legit yeah, to... is the thing oh, yeah. so go do them yeah it's legit <laughs> yeah the one thing i'll tell you is ed it's free on youtube don't go buy a twelve hundred or three thousand dollar course to learn some of that stuff because you're, you can learn most of that on your own just by watching videos. So I don't want anybody to get suckered into something that's not legitimate. So totally. Yeah. Uh, and you, you do end up learning it for sure. Oh, yeah. Yeah. And, yeah. Pick up and that, just, uh, you know, on YouTube and asking around as well. Out in the yeah. 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 I Everything I know, I graduated college in 1986 and had never turned on a computer. So when I graduated, there was no Internet no handheld devices, no social media. So everything that I do today that I've learned, I learned on my own, no classes, no courses. You just learn it. You just, and the only way to learn it is to do it. That's the easiest way to learn it is just to do it day, day after day. And especially to get really proficient. Yeah. Uh, you know, to the point where you can do it first, like even a hobby, but let alone a living. Cause otherwise some of this stuff can easily start taking a long time. Like the first few times you do stuff, is always interesting. And then when they change it every three months, then yeah. there's that. Uh, yeah. But, you know, that's how we get all these improvements so fast, right? Yeah. Yeah. And you'll learn. I mean, you sometimes you'll end up in Facebook groups or forums or you'll get emails from certain people and they'll tell you the updates. You know, just if you, whatever you're doing, find somebody that's an expert on it, sign up for whatever free crud they're sending out, get that free stuff and just keep reading it. And they'll tell you when there's tweaks to that Facebook algorithm or YouTube or Google. And, and then you don't have to so much worry about it. But then when you see that there's a change, you go do it yourself. And the reason you learn to do all this yourself is because when you do get bigger and you need to hire somebody, you know, when you hire them, whether they're good at it or not, because you've already done it. And you, you know, some people that don't know anything about Facebook ads will hire somebody. How do they know if the person's really good at Facebook ads or not? They could be throwing away thousands of dollars. Or they may have got that twelve hundred dollar course and exactly what they're really good at is selling you, right? Yeah, exactly, exactly. So, so it doesn't hurt to know this stuff before you hire somebody. Which, you know, I've always been what I call an indiepreneur, where I've never really wanted to hire anybody. I I just like working by myself. So I don't have to worry about an employee and taxes and forms and insurance and and all that. But there's several companies that I've started. I could have hired employees. I just didn't want to go that route. So, I mean, if you don't need to. Yeah, I never needed to. So, yeah, it's a uh, it's a very interesting deal. And the other side of it is, like you're saying, which makes it you know valuable to understand how it works and how to do it is, uh, I mean, it is incredibly valuable to some places. I mean, in, oh, yeah, some people do really well doing that. Uh, yeah, well, you know, me, me starting my online venture and building my 100 websites, all of a sudden, everybody in town knew I built websites. So I really started a side web company. And I've built, I don't know, dozens of websites for people here in Enid. I don't like to do it. It's not, it's not something I enjoy doing for other people. But you know, if I want an extra six, $800, sometimes right. I'll just say, yeah, I'll build you a website. And I just throw a WordPress website together for 800 bucks. I mean, you know, it's not something I do that often just because I usually don't have enough time, but it's there. I mean, I imagine you were the guy for Enid, especially like, you know, I don't know which, when you're talking about, uh, are you saying you, you, still, I, still, yeah. Like, okay. uh, oh yeah. Yeah. Within the last probably half a year, I probably built, so I can't think of what I, any, I still do logos and I still do cartoons, but I don't do it enough that it, that's my whole, that's my business. But every now and then I'll get, you know, I'll get a request. Like I just did a logo for a hamburger place here in town, a, a, a pink flamingo. You know, I, I just, you know, it was 300 or 600 bucks for the logo, you know? So, um, it was just something fun to do, but I'm not stuck doing logos again for the next 12 months. It's just, I, Every day I wake up, I could be doing something different. Yeah. yeah. Which makes it fun. Get those synapses firing off a little bit. Of, yeah. Keep it interesting, yeah. right? Yeah. 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 So one day I could be doing websites. One day I Enid Buzz, do, interviewing people. The, you know, and that's what the cool thing about doing the Enid Buzz. Being in the media, 
you know, I, I've gotten to fly with the Thunderbirds. I've gotten to interview Garth Brooks. I've gotten to go to the presidential inauguration. I've interviewed Gene Simmons. Um, you know, just it just it's led to a whole bunch of cool stuff. But if I didn't put myself out there and build that, it never would have happened. I'd be sitting in some office somewhere doing nothing, have never talked to anybody. Mm -hmm. So you, you got to take that initiative and get started. And I always, you know, I just tell, I just want to beat it home. Get started right now. If, if somebody's listening to this or watching it tonight, get started. Free app, anchor app for a podcast, YouTube video free, or go to Wix or Weebly or Blogger or uh, um, 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 Tumblr and start your own free blog and just get going. And then you'll pivot. You'll start doing something. And there'll be one blog post or one podcast, and all of a sudden you'll get five emails, and people will say, hey, that was a really cool episode you did. And then all of a sudden you're like, oh, well, people want to listen to that, and then you kind of pivot that direction. And, and that's it. But you can't pivot if you don't start. If you don't start yeah. somewhere, there's nowhere to go. And then you might find out during the process that you're actually like really passionate about like actual content production, or you might be exactly. really good at marketing. Like once you learn how to market those videos through Google, uh, was it AdSense? You – uh. Yeah. Like that's, I mean, just once you get into there, it's like a whole new world opens up in your mind of like, oh, wow. So I can give them this much money and they'll go show, you know, I can get this in front of anybody. Yeah. It's, it's a pretty wild world. Yeah. Pretty I'm kind of wondering where you're going to end up. You, you think you're going to be a musician right now, but man, well, I, definitely, I, I definainly am right now, but you know, I, uh, I, I, I see the, I see the sparkle in your eye when you're talking well, about this social media stuff. So I, I said for, I've said for a while that we all like, end up uh functioning as a lot of different things you know unless you're i guess like really famous like growing up i figured i'd be you know like super famous and like just only played music you know uh -huh. would be, like, deal. and like now like to imagine a lifestyle where like i only played music and didn't have to like do like marketing and like flyers and like the whole other side of it one or like build the stage you know and like tear it down and that whole deal like yeah one side of it I almost would feel really weird probably but the other side is it's really rewarding actually too uh like getting home from a gig where you like did the stage and did the whole deal you know it's a uh, it's it's a pretty cool deal um yeah and so it is a lot more than just music yeah a lot more especially you know? the market yeah uh, -huh. uh it, it is it is not true in on the internet build it and they will come it it will not happen so you got to get out there, and that's what you use the social media for, which is the TikTok, the Facebook, Instagram, YouTube. Um, and so, and another thing that I tell people, and I don't know, I'm. Do you have a website yet? ZachBakerMusic.com, and okay. also I forgot to mention earlier, it's ZachBaker.Bandcamp.com is where okay. you can find that that song that I put up the other day. So if uh -huh. anybody wants to, I'll put it in the you know description or whatever. Show cool. show notes. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Okay, yeah. So, so what I tell everybody is, no matter how famous you think you are on Instagram or TikTok or YouTube, you still got to have a website to fall back on. Because if somebody goes to Google and searches for you, they're not going to find you on TikTok and Google. I always build you a website. My, rule number one. Well, rule number one is get started. Rule number two, get a domain name and build your own website. No, really? you and don't let that hold you back. Because yeah, Facebook. A, a lot of people like I've played a lot of gigs with just a Facebook yeah like nothing yeah. else like no recordings like just like iPhone live videos and uh and uh a Facebook and you can you can gig if you can play or honestly even if you can't if people like you you know yeah yeah if you got a, if you got a kind of a twerky personality that's what I tell people if you're wanting to do a podcast and there's already 200 people doing a podcast on that subject it doesn't matter man do your own if because i know i listen to some podcasts and some people's voices annoy me sometimes they say um too many times sometimes their content they get off topic mm -hmm. so do your own podcast and people will find you and they they are not gonna stay with the other people forever they'll they'll shop around and when they find people they like they may like your personality they may like your voice more don't let it discourage you if there's a lot of people already out there doing what what you're wanting to do. So yeah, and and if you don't have that perspective already, it might be really worth it to do it. Just because like when I did that Amazon deal, I didn't realize how big the world was or how many people like. It would be very strange if whatever you're producing didn't have some people out there that 
are going to enjoy it or appreciate it or want it. You just got to, you know, get on those marketing deals and figure out how to show it to them. Yeah. yeah. Where, who are yeah. they? Where are they? How do I get it to show up on their computer? But after that, they're out there probably. Yeah. Yeah. And I, and I also say build it. I don't know if you're building one, but build an email list. So on your website, on your social media, go to, go to, um, uh, MailChimp and open up a free account and up until a certain amount of emails, it's free and start building that email list because out of everything that you do other than your website. Now, if you do a website, like on WordPress, you own it. If you go to Wix or Weebly, they, they kind of control it. But if you build your own website, and you have your own email list, those are things that you own that nobody can take away from you. Instagram could go away tomorrow. TikTok could go away tomorrow. And you're you're gone. If that's all you're relying on, you're gone. The thing about a WordPress website is they can change let's the say you got it and you're gone. You can change the algorithm and you're gone. So that's why you want to have an email list. So if you've got an email list, and like I said, let's say you get it up to a thousand people. Now when I say a thousand people, I'm talking a thousand loyal fans. I'm not talking a thousand random people. These are, you might, you might have 3000 random people, but a thousand of those people are true loyal fans. You can fire off an email to them and say, Hey, I'm going live tonight from my house. I got a new uh, song out and you put the link in there to where they can buy it instant. You know, if you sell to 10% of them, you got a hundred sales right there. You know, it's just, uh, so get that email list going as well. Absolutely, man. Well, we probably should wrap it up. I'm thinking just because uh, it's gone so well so far. We, you know, we, we're we can talk forever. Recording, so probably about 45. Yeah, uh, yeah. No, I, I tell people when once I get started talking on this, you, you can't hardly shut me up. That's why I thought I better do a podcast because every time I get with somebody, I talk about this stuff over and over again. If you do a podcast, you only have to talk about it once and thousands and thousands of people can listen to it on their leisure. That's what, and so even today, a lot of people don't understand what a podcast is. It's basically a radio show that you can listen to whenever you want. So when a radio show's over, it's gone, it disappears. A podcast is always there for you to go to and listen to anytime you want. So. To be technically a podcast, does it have to go through the actual like podcast like system? I can't remember, uh, I've done it before. Uh, to, to be a, to be an official podcast, you kind of to me, it's kind of like to, to have a, a video channel. You've almost got to be on YouTube. Right. To have a podcast, you've almost got to have it in iTunes. And yeah. so I, iTunes requires certain parameters for it to be a a podcast. You know. Right. So. But that so, means that I consume like almost almost all of them that I consume on YouTube. So. Podcasts. Yeah. So it's like. Yeah. That's why I was wondering and, if it's and those hey, those are podcast. kind of those are more what we call vlogs right because you're really you're 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 video blogging now if you were to rip the audio from that YouTube video and upload it to iTunes it would be an official podcast okay that's the distinction yeah so a podcast is literally something you only listen to you don't watch a podcast it's it's literally you only listen to it all right. Okay, so we are. And otherwise, this is a vlog, man, technically. Uh, this is technically a vlog, yeah. All right, we're going to have to change things up then. <laughs> well, just rip the audio and upload it to iTunes, and it'll be a podcast as well. And then you oh, can yeah. call it whatever you want. Oh, yeah. yeah. And the little commercials on Instagram, little, you know, the, the video on YouTube, it's all over the place, man. Or it will yeah. be. Yeah. Seven o'clock tonight, I'll put it on Facebook, so. Cool. I'll get on there and do some commenting. And you guys, uh, if, if you guys are fans of Zach's, please share his stuff, comment on his stuff, click on his links, um, like and share. That all is what we call engagement. The, the more you guys engage with him, the more people he reaches, the more people he reaches, the more people that like, then the more, and it's just a snowball. And so we got to get people to do an all that engagement. Don't just sit there and watch that. Comment, click, like, and all that other share, please share. You like, got to share. Videos. It's like a big wheel that we're all spinning, kind of like if you yeah. want to, like help me, like push it. You know what exactly. I mean? Exactly. A little yeah, bit. So, yeah. So if if they're fans of you and they, yeah, if they're fans and they can't afford to buy any songs, it's almost as good for them just to share. That's incredibly valuable, honestly. Yeah. I mean, because because the gains that you can make in those algorithms and that kind of deal, uh, there it, it, it's it's really really valuable, especially because you know Facebook wants you to pay. I mean, this is getting down into a whole other deal. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. You know, 
Facebook used to be a great place to get in front of a whole lot of people really quickly for free. Uh, yeah. And now. Um, now it, now it's TikTok. Y- TikTok is the place to be. Facebook. Yeah. So so where is this video going? Is it going to YouTube or your website? It will go to Facebook and to YouTube. And so then I will I'll do a bunch of these. So I will be taking the audio and putting it on iTunes. Um, okay. But I've got a YouTube channel. Uh, you've got to just search for it. I've got videos all over the place that you can use them as a link, but the URL isn't custom. So like it's it's a pain to give it to people. That's what I was, that's what I was going to say. If we could get people to subscribe to your YouTube channel, once you, I think once you get to 100, you can get the vanity URL, and that's, that's what we need to get you to. So yes, if you can somehow post a link so we can go to that link, and then everybody that's watching or listening to this, go to that link and subscribe. Whether you watch his videos all the time or not, he just needs the subscription so he can get to 100 so he can get that vanity URL. So we need to help you out and do that. Look at this so, guy. He knows what he's doing. You gotta get you man. man. This yeah. is why I knew when I saw your name pop up when I was talking about doing podcasts, I was like, there, that first one. Yeah, you bet. Okay, man. Well, take care. I appreciate you having me on. All right, buddy. Thank you. I really appreciate you being the first one. And uh, I I sincerely hope we can do another one or two later because I've still got what must be like three hours worth of questions I still want to ask about other stuff. So. Okay, so, sounds good, man. We'll talk soon. Thank you, Curtis. Okay, take care. You guys, everybody out there, take care. Bye, guys.